Okay, this is super exciting. There is a way to do 3D face tracking in the free version of DaVinci Resolve. You can do so many cool things with this, so I'm gonna walk you through how to do it. So this technique will work best on locked off shots where you're just moving your head. So how this technique works is we take a 2D track and basically bring it into 3D. So first, I'm going to add a tracker and then just find a point on my head with good contrast that doesn't move a lot. I don't move my eyebrows much this shot, so that'll work fine. I'm gonna change the adaptive mode to best match and just track that forward. All right, that tracked all the way through and it's sticking nicely to my eyebrow. So I'm gonna hold shift and bring this off. So next, I'm gonna add a transform node, not connected to anything. Then the center, I'm gonna connect it to the tracker one tracker path. So now the transform has the data for my track. So now we can bring this into 3D. So I'm gonna drag down an image plane 3D and bring my footage into that. This basically puts my footage on a 3D card. So I'm also gonna add a camera 3D and a render 3D. I'm gonna take the output of the render and merge it over the media one. Then in the apply mode, I'm gonna change it to difference. Nothing should have happened. If I bring back my camera, you can see the parts that are the same of the image turn black. So we just wanna bring back our camera to the whole image is black. So what we see in the render is exactly the same as our footage. In this viewer, I can right click on the perspective and change it to camera 3D one. All right, so now let's bring in our track. So I'm gonna add transform 3D and plug that into the merge. So the transform 3D is basically the same as a 2D transform, except now it has the Z axis. Another feature it has is the target. So if I bring forward this target and drag it around, you can see that the original point is pointing at wherever this target is, and that's really the secret of this effect. So we wanna link our target to the values of our 2D track. So to do that, I'm gonna to go to our original transform and click this little pin here. Now I can bring up the settings of the transform 3D and see the original transform settings. So to link this to the track, I can put equals in the X and Y values. We don't need to do anything to the Z since it's a 2D track, there's no Z information. So we can click in this little square and drag out. Now we can link this to the center, but if we press play, well, the value hasn't changed at all. That's because the center actually has two values in this transform, the X and Y. Since this is the X, we want the X. So I'm gonna type point X. Now the value is the same as the X. We can do the same with the Y. Now you can see our target has the same motion as the tracker, but it's way off into the right. That's because the 3D and 2D systems work a little different. So in 2D, the middle of the frame has a value of 0.5, but in 3D, it starts at zero. So what we can do is type minus 0.5 after the X and Y. Now if we press play, the X looks good, but the Y is off. It's too high and it doesn't quite match our track. So because I'm working in a 16 by nine aspect ratio, the X axis is actually bigger than the Y axis. So what we can do is type times, then in parentheses, nine divided by 16. So now it has the right motion for the Y axis, but it's too high. So we can subtract 0.28. Why 0.28? I, I really don't know. It's just the only value that looked right. All right, so at this point, we can actually delete our image plane and bring our media into the camera. So now if we add any geometry, it won't be clipping through our image plane. And let's actually do that. I'm gonna bring down an image plane 3D and put it in our transform. Then I'm gonna select wireframe just so we can see it better. So if I press play, it doesn't really look right at all. We can fix this by bringing back the Z position. We can actually use some math to figure out how much we need to bring back the Z. So I'm gonna bring my media into the viewer and bring down a rectangle, not connected to anything. Now I'm gonna bring it to the center of my head and squeeze it down till it's about as wide as my head. So that's giving me width about 0.26. So we can subtract 0.26 from our Z. Now it looks better, but it's actually giving us values for the back of our head. We want it to be in the middle of our head. So we can divide that by two. And now this is roughly in 3D space where the middle of our head would be. If you want to recenter it so that it's pointing at, you can play with the X and Y rotation. I would recommend changing the order to Y, X, Z. So now if you connect anything to this transform 3D, it'll move around the face in accurate 3D space. This really opens up a ton of new possibilities that I didn't think was possible in the free version of Resolve. So if you have any ideas on how to use this, leave them in the comments below. And if you wanna learn more about Fusion's 3D workspace, then check out this video where I made a $1,000 shot for free.